Uh, good afternoon. I'm Doug Jevons. I'm a managing director with BBC Research and Consulting in Denver, Colorado. And I'm going to talk uh, this afternoon a bit about a study we've just completed on the employment and other economic benefits from advanced coal electric generation with carbon capture and storage. And Doug, give us, give us a sense of, of the overall purpose of the study. Why, why was this study conducted? Uh, the study was conducted for several reasons. Uh, there, there's been uh, an increasing amount of study about uh, advanced coal electric generation with carbon capture and storage, but to date, uh, the prior studies have focused on technical aspects, uh, engineering requirements, uh, cost, and, and uh, items of that nature. No one had, to date has conducted a study regarding what the implications for the broader economy might be of constructing and operating these types of facilities. And, and what does the study estimate? Uh, the study looks at the jobs and other economic benefits that would be associated with constructing these types of plants along with uh, carbon capture and storage infrastructure and operating these plants on an ongoing basis. Uh -huh. And the approach that you took for the study, talk a little bit about what the overall approach was to complete the study. The overall approach uh, really began with the existing research that had been done by the Department of Energy's National Energy Technology Lab <coughs> and the uh, Electric Power Research Institute. Uh, building from that research to uh, essentially define what a typical plant would look like in terms of the, the costs and types of uh, expenditures involved in construction, and then what it would require to operate that plant. Um, that information was then incorporated into uh, an economic model uh, to estimate jobs, output, value added, and uh, labor income associated with construction and operations. Great, great. And uh, obviously you focused on uh, a couple of technologies that are, that are associated with advanced coal generation. Can you talk a little bit about the technologies that you focused on? Uh, sure. The, um, currently the, the sort of two leading technologies are supercritical pulverized coal plants and integrated gasification combined cycle plants. We look at both types of plants in this study, although the economic, uh, the economic benefits from each type of plant are a little bit different. In aggregate, the, the total numbers don't vary that much depending on which technology is used. Great, great. And uh, let's talk a little bit about findings and benefits. I understand that you, uh, you grouped the, the findings of the study into two different components, if I'm not mistaken. One had to deal with the construction phase and one had to deal with the operating phase of the coal plants. Uh, can you go into a little bit of detail on, on the findings as it pertains to each of those? Sure, absolutely. The, um, the largest benefits uh, in the short run are associated with construction. These are uh, massive projects uh, which would involve uh, many thousands or perhaps even millions of workers if done on a really large scale, uh, but for a relatively short duration during construction. Uh, but there are also very substantial ongoing annual permanent job uh, and economic benefits associated with operations. And as far as uh, I believe the findings where you created some baseline scenarios uh, according to certain um, uh, levels of gigawatts, if I'm not mistaken, uh, can you talk a little bit about the exact findings? And, and by all means, feel free to just continue to look down at your, at your papers there. But talk a little bit about the findings uh, as it pertains to each of the baseline gigawatts uh, in both the construction and the operating phases for us. Sure. Uh, we looked at three different scenarios for kind of long-term uh, deployment of a fleet of these types of facilities. Uh, we looked at a scenario under which there would be 20 gigawatts of uh, electric generation capacity across the country from advanced coal facilities with carbon capture and storage, uh, another scenario with 65 gigawatts, and uh, the largest scenario with 100 gigawatts. Under the 20 gigawatt scenario, which is roughly 40, 36 to 40 uh, plants, uh, we're looking at about 1.4 million job years uh, for construction of these plants. Now obviously those jobs might not all overlap, they could be stretched over a period of time. Uh, in terms of output or business revenues, uh, construction of 20 gigawatts of these facilities would generate about $220 billion worth of output. Uh, by the time we add in secondary effects or multiplier effects throughout the economy, and in terms of labor or worker earnings, we'd be looking at about $75 billion from construction of 20 gigawatts of generation. In the operating phase, after those plants are built, uh, on an ongoing basis, those 20 gigawatts or roughly 40 plants would support about almost 50,000 jobs on a permanent basis. Uh, annual output in the economy would be about $11 billion from those plants, and worker earnings uh, annually would be about $3 billion. Um, that basically scales up under the other scenarios, and if we, if 
we just shift to the largest scenario of 100 gigawatts, uh, construction of 100 gigawatts, which is nearly 200 plants across the country, we're looking at nearly 7 million total jobs, uh, including multiplier effects uh, throughout the economy, about $1.1 trillion in economic output from construction of those plants, and about $370 billion in labor earnings. Um, <clears throat> again, on an operating or ongoing uh, annual basis, 100 gigawatts of uh, advanced coal electric generation facilities with carbon capture and storage would support approximately 235,000 jobs throughout the economy, uh, labor earnings of about $16 billion a year, and about $55 billion in total economic output every year. Great, great. And there's obviously been some, some recent talks in the news and, and some recent articles in the press concerning overall quality of green jobs. And I know that you've touched, touched upon uh, quality of jobs as it pertains to this study with others and was hoping you could touch upon sort of the overall quality of, of the jobs that, that are being discussed here in this study. Sure. One of the things we looked at, uh, the economic modeling we've done here allows us to look at what types of jobs are we creating, where, which sectors are involved, what's the typical earnings for these jobs, and so forth. And uh, uh, these would be very high quality jobs. In the construction phase, uh, the, most of the direct jobs would be uh, in uh, skilled manufacturing of uh, specialized equipment that these plants require, heavy construction jobs, and professional services and engineering type jobs. Uh, even when we include the, the multiplier effects, uh, we're looking at an average wage level of over $50,000 per job uh, across the economy during the construction phase. And in the operating phase, the average wage level is even higher. Uh, the average wage is of around $65,000 or so per job uh, for these ongoing permanent jobs associated with these facilities. Again, those are including the multiplier effects, which brings in a lot of retail trade and service jobs. The direct jobs uh, in, the, in the sectors that are primarily affected would have even higher wages than these. Yeah. Excellent. Anything else that you care to add that we may not have touched upon? Uh, no, I think that, that does a good job of kind of summarizing the key findings. Uh, again, we encourage folks to take a look at the overall study, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to uh, more widespread uh, review and distribution of the results. Great. And if anybody has any questions, I imagine that they could contact you maybe by an email address or a, or a phone number. They sure can. My email is uh, my last name, which is J-E-A-V-O-N-S at bbcresearch.com. And my telephone number is 303-321-2547, extension 223. Great. Doug, I appreciate your time with this. My pleasure. Thank you.